Hello and welcome to the second part of the final lecture of the Forgot My Password journey. In this lecture, we will handle the GET request when users click on the password reset link in the email that we have sent them, create a change password bootstrap page, handle the POST request when users enter their new password. We will again use the forgot password branch. To check it out, we can execute the git command git checkout forgot password. Next, in the forgot my password controller, we need to write a method to handle the get request when users click on the link that we have sent them via email. To achieve this, we can add a change user password get method to the forgot my password controller. It returns the view name corresponding to the bootstrap page where users will be able to reset their password. We can then create a constant named change password view name and assign to it the value forgot my password forward slash change password. The change user password get method then simply returns this constant. The method accepts four arguments. ID prefixed with the at request param annotation for which we will define the value ID. Token, prefix with the at request param annotation, for which we will define the value token. The ID and token parameters come from the link that we have sent to users via email. We will have the method accept two additional arguments, a locale and a model map. Spring will automatically fill both of these for us. Next, we will annotate the method with the at request mapping annotation for which we will set the value attribute to the constant change password path and the method attribute to the value request method dot get. We will also need to add this constant to the list of publicly accessible URLs in the security config class. For now, we will simply return the view name and implement the logic later. Now, we can create the change password page. We can copy the email form page and remove the bootstrap container. Then I'm going to copy the code that I've prepared for this lecture and we'll walk you through it. As usual, pause the video and make sure that your code looks like the one shown in the lecture. If you run into any problems, you can always clone my repository, check out the forgot password branch and compare your code with mine. By now, you should be familiar with how we create a bootstrap form. Within the bootstrap container, we have a row for user messages and another to contain the bootstrap form. The form will submit a POST request to the forward slash change user password URL. Please note the hidden input field named principal underscore ID. Here, we are setting its value to the principal ID property value coming from the model map. We haven't set this value in the controller yet, so please bear with me and it will become clearer in a moment. The form has two input fields. One is the password, the other is the password confirmation. The fields are respectively named password and confirm password. In the next section, we will see how to add validation to our forms. For now, when testing this page, we will ignore the confirm password value. Finally, the form declares the submit button. In this form, we have declared the following i18n properties reset password success message to which we assign the value your password has been successfully set. Forgot my password fill in form below which we have already defined. Reset password plead to which we assign the value enter your new password. Login password text which we have already defined. And finally sign up form confirm password to which we assign the value confirm password. We have prefixed this latest property with the word sign up as we will reuse it later in the course when implementing the account creation journey. I'm now going to create a new section in the messages.properties file called the sign up where we will be placing all sign up properties later on in the course. If we restart the application now, go through the forgot my password journey and click on the email link the change password form should appear. As a word of warning, since we are using an in-memory database, every time we restart the application, all existing information 
including the tokens that we have created, is lost. Therefore, to test the forgot my password journey, we need to start from scratch every time by accessing localhost 8080, click on the login link, then on the forgot my password link and so on. Great, our forgot my password journey is really coming together. Now, we need to check that the token and the user ID parameters are valid, that the token exists in the database to avoid the situation where someone could just make one up, that the user ID associated to the token matches the user ID passed as argument, and finally, that the token is not expired. If all of the above is fine, we set the principal ID key in the model map with as value the user ID. I'm now going to copy the code that I have prepared for this lecture and then I'll talk you through it. First, we check that the parameters are valid. The user ID must not be zero and the token must not be null or empty. Notice that we have used spring string utils is empty method. This method returns true if the string is null or is an empty string. Then we retrieve the token using the password reset token service. If the token wasn't found, we log a warning and we display an error message to the user. Otherwise, we extract the user object from the returned password reset token object and check that the user ID passed as parameter matches the user ID associated with the token. If not, we log a warning and display an error to the user. This protects the application from being invoked by a user other than the one who received the email. Then, we check that the token is not expired by comparing the current time with the token expiry date. If the token is expired, we log a warning and display an error message to the user. Otherwise, it means that everything is OK and we can perform the following operations. We set the principal ID key in the model map so that it's available to the change password page. If you remember, the value of this attribute, which is the user ID, will be set in the form hidden field. We will use this value in the subsequent post action when the user has entered a new password and pressed the submit button. Then we auto-authenticate the user before we redirect to the change password page. Why do we do that? In the method that we are going to write in a moment, the one that handles the post request when users update their password, we want to make sure that only an authenticated user can perform this action. In that method, we will also make sure that the authenticated user ID matches the value of the hidden input type field, and that's why we have added it to the form. If there is a user mismatch or the token is expired, you will have noticed that we use the i18n service to retrieve localized messages. We are using two new i18n properties to achieve this. Reset password token expired, to which we assign the value Your token has expired, please visit the forgot my password link again, and Reset password token invalid, to which we assign the value The URL that you have clicked on doesn't appear to be valid. So, let's add these two properties to the messages.properties file. You will have also noticed that we have added two new constants to the forgot my password controller. Password reset attribute name, which is set to the value password reset. This is the flag that we use in the change password page to know whether to display a message to the user. And message attribute name, which we have set to the value message. This is the model map key for the message that we want to display to the user. I'm now going to scroll up and down through the forgot my password controller so that you can pause the video and ensure that your code looks like mine. At this point, the user will enter a new password and click the submit button. We need to add the method to the forgot my password controller to handle the post request. I'm going to copy the code that I've prepared for this lecture and then I'll walk you through it. The method accepts three arguments. The principal ID coming from the hidden field in the form, the new password and the model map. In the method, we get the authentication object from the security context holder. If the user is not authenticated, which means that the authentication object is null, we log an error as this is potentially a security breach. Set the update status to false 
and display to the user an error message. Otherwise, we can assign the value returned by authentication get principle to a user type since the user entity implements the user details interface. Next, we check if the authenticated user is the one who clicked on the password reset email. Again, if this is not the case, we log an error and display an error to the user. Now, we need to auto-wire a user service so that we can invoke the update user password method that we have implemented a couple of lectures ago. Finally, we set the update flag to true and redirect the user to the change password page. If we restart the application now and test the whole forgot my password journey, we will be able to see that the journey ends with the user's password being updated. Now we can close the git flow workflow First, by pushing the local changes remotely with the git commands git add star git commit minus m completed the forgot my password journey implementation and git push. Then we merge the code to develop with the git commands git checkout develop git merge forgot password and finally git push. This lecture concludes this section. In the next section we will implement the account creation journey. We will start by introducing the form validation JavaScript API. Thank you for your time and I see you in the next section.